So Frank, uh, so talk to us about how you define the role of an ontologist and perhaps how EA Games talks or thinks through the role of an ontologist. It's kind of a double-edged question because there's the, uh, no one in the industry has really defined it. I've seen the title, informa Enterprise Information Architect, Enterprise Content Architect, Ontologists. There's a number of different ones here. Here we use the title Ontologist, but essentially this is somebody who has to understand what all of the things in an organization mean and figure out how to teach computers and, and other systems how to also understand the things that mean. So the role of a working ontologist or a team of working ontologists, I have a small team of people that I manage, uh, is to actually build that out and figure out what applications that is. The thing is that it, it bleeds into the edges. It's not just, in our role at EA, it's not just figuring out the model, it's also figuring out where did this come from? Who touched it? Why did it change? Where did it go? Who's using it for what, right? Um, and so it isn't just, you know, sitting down and building a model and a tool, it's figuring out, okay, and that came from three systems over there and two systems over here and five different people think the same thing. And it's, it's harder when you work for a media company or uh, then, because I've worked for insurance companies and other things, but it's harder when you work for a media company because everything's so squishy. I mean, it's easy to define, it may be easy to find what a stock is. It's a lot harder to define what a superhero is, right? And so that, so in a media company, it sort of bleeds out into the people who write narratives and stories and the people who write game design and people, it bleeds into lots of different places because the thing that you're trying to define isn't real. Uh, that's a good point, Frank, and, and thanks. I like that last, uh, that last point there. Yeah, not real. Uh, anyone else want to tackle this? How you, you know how you or you within your company define the role of an ontologist? Uh, I'll jump in on that, Mike. I think that uh, th it's a new term. We we think as ontologists, we struggle with our own definition, but it's even harder to take uh, that to a business or a technology stakeholder who you know that's a it's a buzzword. So uh, you know, I think a lot of that is the education on what is the value of, of the definition and apply that to some real world scenarios. So we've been focusing mostly on like POCs or some tangible examples of saying, here's a taxonomy, not as a buzzword, but here's a working copy we can use. Here's an ontology portal that has a list of definitions. And so once we can kind of cross that uh, bridge from the vocabulary to actually some tangible examples, it really helps them get up to speed. Hmm. Morgan, I think you wanted to, uh, I think you're ready to talk as well. Yeah, we're just going to add that uh, my team, basically, we all work for the design team, so the centralized design team. Um, so uh, we come from a, a broad a number of backgrounds. So uh, I'm a designer, I'm an architect, I'm a librarian, I'm also an evangelist. Um, and then I work with linguists and I work with other taxonomists. Um, and together we work with both the data team and our customer success team to understand what their needs are. And that process has basically been developing a model to discover relationships of the data and it's evolving because uh, it, as we approach everything from the ontology perspective we got a lot of pushback a lot of discomfort in the programming world right um, we started this journey actually five years ago to try and get people to start adopting this sort of stuff because i come at it from a library of science perspective i started pushing scos and the the architect of a of a taxonomy and we've been kind of joking that it's baby's first text uh, ontology, right? So you, you get them used to the benefits of having a nice structured object, and then they, they want more. And so we've been defining it mostly as this is a, a person who understands broadly, just the other people have said, what the topics are, what, how they interrelate, how some of the systems work, but also come at it from a design perspective. What is it that we want to build? Where are we going? Um, and how can we build that from both a tops down and a bottoms up approach? Taxonomy was borrowed from biology and ontology was borrowed from philosophy. So Brian, I'm sure you've seen over the years, the evolution of, you know, oh, we, we need a taxonomist and this hot thing called taxonomy and thinking of Gartner's hype cycles and things like this. So how have you seen sort of that evolution of an ontologist and, and, and sort of talk about how you, you're, you're thinking about the definition of what that role is. I, I was going to say something very similar to evolution, and I, you know, and I think of this, you know, and I was listening to what, what, what Morgan said. I think it really resonated with me. Is it's just, it's a spectrum, right? You think about, you know, we, a lot of the, a lot of what we talk about, we have to, you know, we talk to folks about is, 
it's a combination of subject matter expertise. It's a combination of that linguistic communicated communication skill. If you can explain this clearly in English, you're already on your way to kind of understanding what is meant to, to, you know, to, to build an ontology. And, you know, that things evolved from, you know, I love the, you know, thinking of SCOS as baby's first ontology. There's a spectrum of, you have kind of, you know, data dictionaries and lightweight descriptions of what's in data that can evolve to a more holistic business glossary that's a more comprehensive compendium, but still for English, you know, for human consumption, that can lead to formal taxonomies. And then you can start to actually formalize the, the, the notions of, of meaning. And, and, and that's the, the kind of the journey I think you can take folks who understand the business on to, understand the business on that journey to kind of understand where ontologies fit. Going from technologists, I almost, you know, like it's a different approach from taking, taking, taking technologists to kind of understand the value of ontology. And the, the aha moment I've seen work best with, with folks there is really get, get them to understand like, look, there is an implicit ontology in all this software you're building. And if it's all in if thens in your application code, that it's unmaintainable and incomprehensible. The idea here is like, let's explicitly talk about this meaning as a first class citizen and then have the software flow from that as opposed to allowing the software to kind of guide the meaning. And I know everyone on this call probably is like, you know, the, that resonates with, but that's kind of, that's the, that's the, I think that's the, the, the way you have to kind of approach it from a technologist's point of view to get them to understand why this has value. Yeah, that's a good point. That really is a good point because technology has, has been behind a lot of the precursors to the work that semantics people do inside of companies now. Yeah. And so that, that view, I think that view, you could, anyone can, can disagree with me on the panel, that view tends to permeate all the way through as you start introducing the concept of a semantic ontologist as opposed to a, like a data architect role. Yeah, that, at least that's what I've seen and, and, and heard. Um, and go ahead, Frank. The, um, some of the some of the difficulty you have bringing these concepts and things into a company is with the technology departments because that what they start seeing is they start seeing their complexity for the first time that's been a big challenge at ea because they're like why is this so hard why is it so complex why is this this and i'm like all this complexity was here already you just hit it in in the in, in a web page and you hit it in in some document in g drive and you hit it all there and we can't use it when it's hidden and the difference now is, is EA wants to use all that hidden complexity to further its business. And it can't use that, bis that complexity because we, we hid it in our technology. Mm. Sean, what, thanks, Frank. Sean, um, I, I know you just fairly recently started at Starbucks. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, uh, prior to Starbucks, I was uh, working in life sciences. So I, I think I'm bringing the ideas of taxonomy and ontologies to retail. That's good. And so what I was going to, and in addition, that's good. Thanks. But how, how did you see, when you got to Starbucks, how did you see ontologies being used perhaps differently than the way you want to shape them or the way that you think they should be shaped? In other words, obviously, oftentimes companies were using ontologies, they just didn't realize it, or they were desiring ontologies, didn't know that's what it was called. I think as Frank was pointing out. So how did you see that, or did you see that where you're working now at Starbucks? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Frank shot on the money, which is that um, there's an implied model, there's an implied ontology, uh, and software is a great place to put that, which is terrible to maintain. So absolutely right there. Uh, to answer the question, is that really uh, what was how Starbucks was using ontologies and, and the semantic technology stack previously was really more operational uh, with, the, with some aspirational goals. Uh, what was, I think, different in kind of an understanding we had to learn the hard way is that the semantic web stack really provides kind of like the, the, the bricks and the foundations and a lot of the structure. It doesn't define the building. It doesn't, it doesn't express what the uh, output is. So a lot of cases, you can use OWL and RDF. And so what we had to do is, is yes, we know there's technologies and tools, but what's the uh, uh, convention? What's the plan? What's the, what's the framework to build this? How do we organize that so multiple teams can work together? And, and you know, that's outside of really what the ontology taxonomy specifications have, uh, but it's very important to the technical teams and uh, uh, the data teams to organize that. So I think what we learned quickly was, uh, just like any big project, how to organize our work, how to think about uh, refactoring ontologies so that we're not putting all the definitions in one class or, or you know, one, one file, uh, how to distribute that and, and, and how to think of that as a framework. Uh, to a specific example is we were uh, very intrigued by the uh, Financial uh, Institute of Business Subjects, the FIBO framework. Uh, they had kind of developed a, a pretty compelling or probably one of the leading examples of a, of a ontology framework. 
uh, the challenge is it's very specific to their industry verticals and we have to kind of pull that apart. So, but the same idea is that every organization has to think about uh, where do we define date and time? Uh, where do we put other definitions and how do we define that framework? So again, I'll just go back to saying is that Owl and RDF, we were using that uh, as, uh, but we weren't organized in a framework. And so our maturity has really been thinking about what are the conventions, what's the SDLC and what's the model uh, for the framework that we're working towards. Mm, yeah, those are good points. Morgan, I see you nodding. I think was there something similar added to it? Oh, yes. I, I think that our leadership, uh, when I first started evangelizing this, they learned about FIBO and immediately went, well, why do, why do we need you to do this? We're just going to adopt FIBO. I mean, this will be great. And I'm like, mm, it doesn't quite work that way, right? It was designed for a very specific use case. It's designed for a very specific set of questions and answers. Uh, and um, since we deal with small businesses, Typically, they don't have IPOs. Um, FIBO, and they don't sell securities. FIBO is completely an overkill and, and wouldn't even uh, breeze by most of, of the businesses that we deal with. Um, and so it was difficult for them to, to, to get in on ha. They actually brought in, I think, I, I think his name was Dan, but I don't remember his last name, the designer of the FIBO to give a lecture to the architects and the data teams um, after I gave them this response um, to basically teach them how they could use FIBO. And they came up with the same uh, information that it's not something that they could apply. But it was a good learning experience for them because it brought them back to the table of, we now understand how what you're writing, what you're creating in a taxonomy, how it's going to evolve and get us to that uh, ontology that we need. And so now, uh, instead of being the, oh, that's the taxonomy team, I'm now the, working with the taxonomy team, but I'm also on all of the the, the teams that are doing the ontology work right so for designing from a bottoms up or a top down so it's it's, it's been a, it's been a good change yeah Brian, did you want to comment brian oh no i'm sorry i was i was nodding vociferously I, I, more I, I i was actually involved with some of your colleagues at, into it when you guys brought dean in uh so i'm, I'm you know and and uh, you know i the, the person who, who you know, they brought in who kind of did the education on, on FIBO was Dean Alamang, who I'm sure some of y'all know who he is, I think given that the title of this is Working Ontologist and he's the author of the Semantic Web for Working Ontologist. But I remember having some of those conversations with some of your colleagues back, th back then and, and it, was, it was good kind of seeing the rapid evolution of the like, let's just adopt FIBO. That nah, doesn't work like that, but, but we can learn a lot from it. There's patterns here for sure. 